John Codsey uses 100-year-old forged French hammers and Swedish lasting pliers to make high-heeled JK Super Duty boots. These boots are nailed together, screwed together, glued together, and stitched together. Worn by firefighters, loggers, construction workers, and the like, you are looking at some of the toughest boots in the world that just so happen to have changed the lives of the toughest people on the planet for the last 400 years. I like to put on two pairs of socky walkies, otherwise my feetsy weetsies with these shoes get blisty wisties, and that's no good. Today we are looking at why the JK Super Duty boots have a big ol' fatty on the back of them, that of course being the heel. These boots are rough and tough and you could hold a lot more weight and not have sore feet than you can with any other boot. And while these boots are some of the toughest boots in the world, you still have to make sure that you get the right ones. These have the honey sole, and when you look them up on Reddit, you will see a comment from Reddit user Smoke Jumper Bro. Smoke Jumper Bro says, the boots that I am wearing, these JK Super Duty boots, are called loft boots, and they are for office work, like sewing and eating ice cream, which is a hysterical comment, but also strangely close to my job. And finally, as amazing as these boots are, they still have some haters. Not JK boots specifically, but these logger PNW Pacific Northwest boots in general. We call those haters the Barefoot Bros. Some of the Barefoot Bros, not all the Barefoot Bros, but either way, a further breakdown of what we will be talking about in the video is here. Number one, why the F do these boots actually have a heel? What does that help with? The key word? dorsiflexion. Number 1A is do these boots make your feet weaker by wearing them because of the heel? Number 2, the bottom section of these boots is fuzzy, the top is not. What is with that? Number 3, why do we have like 12,000 stacks of leather on these boots? And number 5, why when I first put these boots on did I feel a lump right here in my boots? What's up everyone, it's Michael, back with another old video for The Iron Snail. This YouTube channel focuses on two things. One, incredibly deep dives into every technical aspect of a shoe, of a boot, of a clothing article, whatever it may be. And two, fashion stuff. And today, of course, we are deep diving incredibly deep and dangerously into JK Super Duty boots. I have showed in two videos how you are wasting a lot of money every time you buy something, and this will be the third video where I show you. This video is sponsored by Carrot, where you can get everyday items without a coupon up to 90% off. I do it all the time, and I'm going to do it right in front of you right now. You get these fantastic deals by using Carrot's Deal Hop tool. It searches the image that you are looking at and says, hey, check out this site, this site, that site. They're all cheaper than what you're looking at right now, and it's the exact same item. I'm not wearing sunglasses today, even though it's very sunny, because I lost all my sunglasses, and I can't keep dishing out my hard-earned dough to big glass, so I use Deal Hop to find me the best deals on sunglasses that I like, and frankly, they're the same ones that I bought before, just cheaper. All you have to do is download the extension on Google Chrome or on your phone, and you can get Deal Hopping in minutes. And on top of that, you can check out my Carrot page and see all of my collections, boots I like, bags I like, what I'm wearing, what I'm not wearing. Everything is on Carrot. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Let's just get to know these boots first. Let's go through the basics and then we'll get to the crazy details, but we need the foundation. These big fat fatties are 10 inches in height. They use eight to nine ounce leather. The insole is genuine oak tanned USA leather. The midsole is genuine oak tanned USA leather. The arch support is USA leather. These boots are made of USA leather. These boots are designed to always keep your foot in a resting position to distribute weight evenly. So standing on this, my feet would normally kind of bend and conform around the tree unless I was wearing rather stiff boots. Now they don't. They stay straight. They get much less tired as I walk around and as I try to balance on something like this. Really, you see this come out if you stand on ladders all day, you want a boot that doesn't let your foot kind of sag over the ladder because then your foot will get tired, which is obviously no good if you have to work for 10 hours a day. You want something that keeps your feet kind of stiff and not overly working and overly flexing. In terms of ground feel when you're walking, you get two things. Number one, obviously it feels like you're standing on an absolute boatload of USA oak tanned leather. There's not a lot of feeling, not a lot of bending. You're not very close to the ground when you're walking on these boots. Now, the one thing that will shock you if you've never worn PNW boots or boots with very strong high arch support is the feeling of arch support. It is unreal on these, and I shall explain what it feels like through the metaphor of a sock. Obviously, these boots have a heel. You may think, though, the bottom of these boots is flat when it's not. It's very, very heavily rounded, and pay attention to that. That will come in handy when we're talking about the heel later. What it feels like is, picture a sock right here 
under your foot. You're not wearing a boot, you're just gently putting your foot down on a sock. That's essentially what it feels like, except the sock is in the perfect place where your foot is no longer splaying out and getting tired. It's resting on the sock and supported, you know, technically by the rest of the boot. I guess the metaphor dies there. It's also a good shot. Check these freaking boots out. These are some of the coolest boots I've ever reviewed. I must admit, I left a crucial part out of the walking, how they feel and stuff test, and that is range of motion. I left it out because it's incredibly fascinating because it works for you and against you, depending on what situation you're in. But when it works for you, it is probably the nerdiest, coolest thing that I've ever heard. It's hacking your foot and your strength. Why the F do these boots have a heel? Number one, I will reference Rose Anvil. You can use the heel as a lug to grip onto things, to lock into things. That's very useful. But number two, it's what I was talking about before. You can see the outsole of these boots literally drips down because there is so much leather used for arch support that if you didn't have a heel, you'd be walking on a weebly wobbly surface and that can happen. So you have to chunk a big heel on the boot in order to have that many layers of leather giving you support. This is a perfectly flat boot. You have no problem walking on that. You can add a little bit of a heel, but perfectly flat, no big deal. JK boots are rounded like this. So now you need to essentially add a little platform so this rounded part isn't touching the ground, otherwise you won't have a lot of steadiness when you're walking. Okay, so now we know arch support is important, but we don't necessarily know why it's important or how it helps you kind of fly up a mountain and still have all of your strength and make things easier. And really, why is it so important that we're chunking giant heels to the bottom of boots? Before we get into dorsiflexion, we have to break down some smaller features of these boots. First things first, why rough out? Why is this leather different than that leather? To put it simply, rough out does not show scratches the same as smooth leather. Rough out, the opposite side of leather is rougher and tougher, it doesn't scratch as easy. You have to get through all of the fibrous material, the fuzz, before you can even begin to scratch the leather. So you have to move a ton of stuff out of the way before you're damaging the leather. Why did Smoke Jumper Bro on Reddit say the outsoles, these honey vibram outsoles, are for office work like sewing and eating ice cream? Because there are different, harder outsoles. I think there's the V100 and the 100. You might have to correct me on that. It is a black outsole. It is harder than the honey outsoles, so it lasts longer. But JK sometimes uses honey outsoles. They use all these outsoles, by the way. You can pick what you want. They sometimes use honey outsoles because people say the softness grips better when you're going through certain terrains. So it does have its pluses and minuses. Okay, and now for the spicy question. Do these boots make your feet weaker? Because obviously if you're walking barefoot, you are strengthening your feet to the max. So do they make your feet weaker? I mean, for their general purpose, I, does it even matter? It's not like your feet are gonna be so weak that you can't walk on them or anything like that. These are for loggers, for firefighters, people working all day long. And yeah, no matter how strong your foot is, you're going to get tired after 10 to 12 hours of fighting fires and lifting logs and heavy equipment. So technically, I mean, yeah, maybe you could get your feet stronger, but are you really going to tell a smoke jumper that he needs to do toe lifts after work. Now I will say walking around in these boots is actually incredible. I love it. I don't feel like I have a lot of foot strain. I'm not doing anything incredibly strenuous, but still they feel great. It's a pleasure to put them on and they're not even broken in yet. I can see why all of the hype surrounds these boots. However, yesterday I had these boots on and I was running through the wood, not going for a run, but I was actually actively running through the woods. And this is where things get interesting because the boots were working for me and against me at the same time. And this is why the heel. Two very important things that you need to keep in mind. Number one, I am the epitome of a random guy on the internet. So talk to a doctor if you need a specific type of boot or shoes. But number two is that my boots are not fully broken in yet. So they will get more flexible over time and break in even more. Dorsiflexion, baby. Dorsiflexion is really, apparently it's just the movement of your foot up like this but it's important when we're talking about these boots. When I was running through the woods, pretending to be a firefighter, I noticed the range of my foot was limited. Usually when you're running, your foot is, you know, these boots kind of kept me like this. So I couldn't go this far, I couldn't really go down that far either. I kind of stayed in the middle. Now, the idea is that we have a golden range in power of our feet when we're going up inclines. It's not overly, superly high, lifting your foot up all the way. It's not overly, super low. So by keeping your feet in the middle, in that power range, you're essentially completely avoiding the super high weak zone where you have less power to go up mountains and hills, which of course means you are fatiguing dramatically less as you do work all the day long because you're using your most powerful range of motion. Okay, so at the beginning of this video, I said these boots technically are not for everyone. I guess I should amend that because JK Boots will custom make boots for you 
Which means, yes, these boots are for everyone. These boots are really everything I could have dreamed of and more. They're amazing. I love just putting them on and walking around. It feels good. They feel like they're built for you. They're molding to your feet over time. I love everything about them. So if I was actually a firefighter, a logger, construction worker, something like that, I would love these even more because they would make my feet feel a lot better. I will see you all very soon in the next video where we look at the lightest jeans in the world and the heaviest jeans in the world.